Hi, my name is Tanya Trump. I am the host of Family Maker Night, and I want to introduce you to Mary Kate Lowry. Mary Kate Lowry is our mobile maker technician with our Pathmakers program. She's going to bring you an activity tonight called Water is Life. Um, it's a really wonderful activity where she's going to be sharing all about the rivers and, and the salmon and the wildlife that lives in the river and our, our connection to one another. During her presentation, she's going to guide you through an art activity. So it's important that before she begins, you get some paper and something to draw with. It could be colored pencils, crayons, or markers. You could even use um, just regular old pencils if you wanted to. And um, as she guides you through this, um, this exploration of water, be kind of keeping your mind in um, the, the art that she's sharing and create your own piece of art. And then at the very end, we hope that you will share that art back with us um, by sharing it out of the Family Maker website. And I'll show you how to do that at the end of the presentation. All right, turn it over now to Mary Kate. Thank you. So I work for the Pathmakers program, and one of our, our big, um, our missions is to provide education for Native and non-Native students about Native STEAM. And Native STEAM refers to the science, technologies, engineering, arts, and math inherent in Indigenous Native cultures around the world, and part of TEK, traditional ecological knowledge. So each of those letters, S-T-E-A-M, stands for for a big idea and if you're a kid who's been here before uh, in our Family Maker Night, you probably remember what each of those letters stand for. If you do, put it in the chat and let's see who can remember. The S stands for science and science is referring to basically the learning about our world, understanding the systems that work it together in our world. Native science is a study of the whole and how these bodies work together and are on the same level with the same precision and accuracy as Western science. Western science has a, tends to have a, a, a small view, a focused view, and an in-depth view. Native science is able to provide a whole. And today, Native science and Western science are just starting to work together in a in a good way to make our understanding of the world even better. The most sophisticated and natural and successful natural resource management system to date is inherent in a Native people's culture worldwide. The T stands for, if you know this word, you can read it with me, technology. Technology means the tools and the ways we use tools in our world. If you've been here before, you know this is a burn a burn professional who are doing controlled burn cultural burns have in have been part of the land management systems for thousands of years helps to reduce the dead brush reduce pests that can accumulate um, bugs to burns help create basket materials and other materials needed for um, daily life what's really interesting is that cultural burns literally change the molecular structure of hazel shoots in order to make those shoots stronger for ill baskets or baby baskets in our local community. The E stands for engineering. What you see is our friend Skip Lowry here, uh, interpreter at Patrick's Point State Park, working on those Yurok houses at, at Sumac Village there. Engineering means the designing, planning, and building our world. Native engineering includes the building, but also the repairing and the management of the things that we build. And you can see some of that repair that he's doing on the house in that picture. The A stands for art. One of my favorite things, and today we get to really explore art. Get your paper, your art materials out, because throughout the presentation, we're going to be looking at different Native artists, different images that have to do with our theme, Water is Life and incorporate that into our own art. So get ready. Lynn Risling is one of my favorite artists. She's a Yurok, Kuruk, and Hoopa artist. And these are two uh, representatives of art that she has. One on the left shows different uh, engineering and art and uh, around California in so many different tribes. And on the right, there's a woman that is that, that spiral friendship design represents native language. 
And within native language and native worldview exists this traditional ecological knowledge that is so important that encompasses our science um, that are based on thousands of years of experience. The M stands for math. Look at those basket caps. They're amazing. Those geometric designs are intricate and complicated and they are thousands of year, years old and have in, in, uh, are full of meaning. Those caps are really special to many different tribes in our area. They're for women to wear during ceremony and special occasions. Those geometric designs um, are, are extremely difficult to create the, the numbers of sticks and how those are divided. Our basket weaver, weavers today are know about mathematical concepts. They're mathematicians as well as those basket weavers from thousands of years. Our big idea tonight is traditional ecological knowledge. If you've been with us before on a family maker night, you know this is something, it's a reoccurring theme. And this is a new concept, learning from native people and from native science instead of learning about native people is the way our education system is changing. Again, indigenous people all over the world have thousands and thousands of years of being in one geographic place versus settlers who may be here for a couple hundred years. And so again, this is a new day and age. Western scientists, indigenous PEK practitioners working together to be able to best take care of our land and our water. Our theme tonight is water is life. Our last Family Maker Night, we save the best for last, the most important, and this in our area being along the coast and part of many different watersheds really is connected to our lives and your life where you are at. Think about what watershed, what river, what water source are you at? Let's think about that. As we go along tonight, as well as looking at different art and incorporating that those ideas and images into our own art, I want you to think about two big questions. Who knows about the sacred nature of water? And who are our water protectors? And I want to invite you to think about becoming a water protector for your own watershed. This is one of my favorite art pieces and um, this is really demonstrates um, the title of this shows what our water protectors are trying to do and it's titled bringing back the balance and the balance in nature between water and earth between humans and the natural world this is part of our human responsibility we take care of each other we take care of the earth the animals the plants the water and they take care of us. We have a symbiotic relationship. This is a first piece of art I'd like you to look at. Put in the chat what you notice. What, what is the first thing that struck you about this piece of art? This is done by Lynn Rissling. If you can see the very center of the spiral, what do you think that is? If you can guess, put it in the chat. I think a couple of you have figured it out. That is an embryo, what a human being looks like in the womb. Oh, and the spiral going around emerges from that. Those red circles in the very center, those are ne pui eggs, salmon eggs. The connection between humans and salmon, ne pui, in our local area goes is a relationship that goes back thousands and thousands of years and it's a covenant it's a responsibility uh, to the Nepui just like they've provided for people for thousands of years you'll be some water protectors in this presentation that have really dedicated their life to making sure those are safe at the very end of the spiral you'll see some challenges some things that are providing that are making it hard and have stopped the Nepui, the salmon, from thriving. And 
the big word that I think that can encompass that is industry. And we're going to learn about how that has challenged our fish today and our water. Our water protectors in this local area are our youth, just like you, kids, as young as in kindergarten, up to high school, have gone to protest to protect those the river, protect the fish, and to continue that responsibility. And I would invite you to look into the Save California Salmon website to find out more about what's being done in our local community and find out more information about that. One of our local artists, I'd like to show you two pieces of her art, Annalia Norris Hillman. She's one of our water protectors for many, many years. There's two pieces that are both entitled, Only Water Can Save Us. Take a minute, look at the picture. What does that make you feel? What do those images show you? You can see the woman is wearing a cap. She's holding the nepui, the salmon, in a loving way. And that is demonstrating that relationship, that deep connected relationship between people, the fish, and the river. This is another piece by, by Analia, and it's also entitled, Only Water Can Save Us. The idea to bring to the forefront of our, of our imaginations and our consciousness is the sacred nature of water. And in this image, she's used two di many different media in order to convey, a, again, a spiral. You see that, sh that spiral? What do you think that spiral represents? You can put it in the chat if you think you have some ideas. Share with, your art with other artists that are here with us. I like how she mixes old pictures with words and also art and color. Think about what colors you want to use. I'd like to introduce you to a young and upcoming Native artist. And if you saw the North Coast Journal in the past couple of weeks, this was the cover. We are so blessed in all of this work by all of our water protectors, environmentalists, Native people, non-Native people, fishermen, our community has really come together in the past 10 years to, and, and more to protect the fish, protect the water, protect the river. And this is, an, uh, we're looking at dam removal in 2023. This was on the cover of the North Coast Journal. Take a look, you, you see is um, a local Native woman. The the blue jay blind is a piece of regalia that's used in the uh, woman's ceremony, a flower dance ceremony. There's a balance. The idea of bringing back the balance. Do you see an example of the balance in that art? Let's think about that. Why is balance so important? And again, there's the mountains in the background. If you would like to put a spiral in your art, or mountains in the background. A lot of times it's good to put m your background first. Use pencil if you need to erase, and you can always add more to it after this event tonight. In these pictures right here, there was an action done by our local water protectors. Um, Analia Norris Hillman, our artist that we've been featuring, is on our left. She's the the woman in the long skirt. And when uh, people from the, the corporation Pacificor that own the dams that are upriver on the Klamath River that block the spawning grounds, that have reduced the water flow, that have created, that have caused the conditions for the fish kill many years ago, they came and visited the river and our water protectors, some of them activists, went out on the river with boats, canoes, and spoke to them directly to, to let them know from their, from their heart what the dams have done and to the community and to the fish and to the river. And we really want to celebrate our water protectors here in our local community.
in 2020, there was an amazing action. So what you see is the Standing Rock community, the No Dapple, the, the, it was a huge nonviolent protest that happened. So everyone knows Martin Luther King has a legacy of nonviolent protest, a spiritual based protest. And this was an example of our contemporary people using and taking the Take, taking that legacy into today. So the Lakota phrase, Mani Wachoni, or water is life, was the protest anthem for Standing Rock. And it was heard all around the world. But it also has a spiritual meaning. So the indigenous worldview that is shared, and of course, indigenous people are so different from, from all different areas, but water does not only sustain life, it's sacred, which means it's spirit connected. It's it's existent with a spiritual understanding, and grassroots people all over the world, non-native people, native people, uh, fishermen, farmers, cowboys have banded together to understand the sacred nature of the earth and the sacred nature of water. And again, that is a great way that we can talk about. Um, the issue or the, the theme for tonight, water is life. This is another image of that, of that movement and it still is ongoing. There's been victories, there's been setbacks, but the alliances, the people of the United States, the people have come together from all different places to protect the water. I really want to share with you some art, art around the nature of water, the nature of the sacred nature of water. This is a non-Indian artist that created this art in solidarity to support the people at Standing Rock that were protecting their land from an oil pipeline that was going to um, interrupt their water sources and go across sacred lands. And that's something, please look up research more about that issue and don't just take my word for it find out it's always about researching whatever you are looking at this is an image that this is one of my favorite pieces of art so um this was created by anishinaabe artist and in solidarity with that movement and i want you to see the the beginning of life in uh, in the woman's womb that's where we are in water in our in our in our mother's womb and the connection to the thunderbirds in our community that uh, is directly connected with water and the rains that come down just like it is today we are uh, blessed to have these rains and uh, bring more water hopefully to our rivers and cooling down whatever waters are in our rivers and it it's a circle it's a cycle she's collecting it and it's connected back to her womb I want to just show you a couple images of young people, kids who are participating in this, who understand, who are learning about the facts, who are learning about the sacred nature of water, and who are participating. This is Autumn Peltier, and this is her quote I wanted to share with you. What she says is this, water is really sacred. Water is life. Mother Earth doesn't need us. We need her. We shouldn't have to fight for our water. We should just be able to have drink, clean drinking water. And not everybody in the world does. I want you guys to take a minute to watch this video that sort of gives a perspective um, about water across our world and the challenges with water pollution. Let's take a look. Hello friends, I am the Earth. Yes, that's right, the very planet you live on. And today I woke up a bit sad. Do you know why? It's because I dreamt that there was even more water pollution. So much so 
that all living things that live in the sea, oceans and rivers had disappeared. Even though it was just a dream, I can assure you that if you don't stop contaminating the water, bit by bit, this horrible dream will come true. The water's contamination worries me tremendously, especially when thinking that three quarters of my surface is water. Even though I'm named the Earth, if you were to look at me from space, you would see more water than land, and that's why I'm also referred to as the Blue Planet. Everyone knows that the water is imperative for life. Without water, there would be no plants, nor animals, nor even us, human beings. Yet still, many people continue to throw rubbish bags, bottles, furniture, into the ocean and rivers as if they were a container where one could get rid of all the things one doesn't want anymore. In many houses, liquids such as oils and dirty products are poured into the drains and then these get mixed up with the water and this contaminated water then travels through the pipes to the seas and rivers. There are also factories which throw their chemical wastes into the waters making them extremely contaminated, killing loads of aquatic animals. Here you can see a seal eating a plastic bag, thinking it's food. We don't know if it'll survive. Or this poor frog lying dead because of contamination. Another of my surface water's enemies is petroleum. You have no idea the damage it has caused to my seas and oceans. The sinking of ships transporting this oil has caused tremendous catastrophes, which only heal with the passing of time. But I don't want to upset you with all that I have told you. As bad or complicated things may seem, there is always a solution. And I am positive that if you were to help me, all together, working as a team, we will make the water clean again and all living things will be safe. A way you can help is by collecting all your trash the day you go on an outing and never ever throw it into the river or sea. Another way you can help is by not throwing any oils or other liquids into the drains, such as paint for example. We can all encourage our families and friends to improve their habits and start to think about the importance of ending our water's contamination. Looking after water is taking care of life, too. This is why you have a great responsibility. I need each and everybody's help to remain healthy. If you take care of the water, you will be taking care of me, my nature, as well as all living things. I have no doubt that together we can make sure my sad dream will never come true. For as you know, children can make a world of difference. I, I really love the end of that video because it says children can make a difference. And I really believe that we've seen it. And this is a, one of my favorite arts that I found that really can exemplify that. It's a young girl, you can tell. And in her hair, there's water creatures, there's water plants, and she's determined. And she's moving and she's taking action. And she's holding a feather representing her spirituality. Just like we're connecting with our, with the spirit connection with water and understanding the sacred nature of water as a part of our existence. This is a, this is a man that I thought really said something interesting that I want to share with you. Let's see what he says. When we're in the womb, we experience water first. Our bodies are made up of 70-80% of water. So they always said that water is our first medicine. A lot of people call it a resource. But for us, water is not a resource, it's the source. And because of that, it's up to us to protect that. Water is life. Many we chose any wash day yellow. When we're in the womb. So I have a question. How, what, did, do you guys remember what percent water our human bodies are? If you do, put it in the chat. 
because to think about that is really amazing. Um, I want to share with you a quote by Michael Preston. He's Winnemum Wintu, and those are our people, our, our indigenous neighbors from over toward Trinity, toward Shasta, who have been water protectors for many years and have um, really protested against the raising of the Shasta Dam and protecting their sacred areas. And again, I, I would urge you to do fact finding and research. Uh, Save California Salmon website is a great resource. And this is what he says. Sacred nature, sacred water exists within ourselves. And that is our connection to everything else that also has water inside of it. If you don't regard water as sacred, you don't regard yourself as sacred. And I, what I want you to think about that is regard yourself as sacred as well as water and make that connection. I really like that quote. I'd like to introduce a local water protector, leader and song carrier in our area, Kisiante Joseph, and having her explain and talk about her connection to water. I grew up in a cultural ceremony family, and ever since I was a little kid, I was always humming. You know, and people always ask me, like, whose song is that? You know, and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it just comes to me. And it's crazy, because no matter where I am, because my dad's people are water people, and river people and whenever I'm next to water you know that's where I get my strength whenever I'm having a hard time whenever I need to think I go to the creek you know and I'll start getting these tunes and I'll start humming and then I think to myself like whose song is that and then I start humming and all of a sudden I'm singing out loud and it's crazy because and that's how they come to me, you know, through the water because I'll sit there and I'll watch the currents of the river and I'll listen to the beat that it has. And to me, it sounds like the beat of a heart as it goes down and along the river. And that's how all my songs become, you know, to the beat of the heart, to the beat of the river, you know, and that's what, what they mean to me. And in, in our culture, songs are our prayers you know the louder we sing the p more power that comes out and the higher it gets carried to the heavens mm -hmm. and that's what songs mean to us is they're our prayer and that's why when we share it with our people you know it's a blessing not only for who's hearing it but for the person who's singing it I am so grateful for um, Kiss Joseph being able to share some of those words and that cultural perspective, that cultural world worldview shared in her personal experience as a leader, as a song carrier, and um, we can learn from her in that connection between indigenous peoples, water, and spirituality. I'd like to continue sharing uh, one last piece of art and then there's an amazing water experiment that I'm going to share with you that comes from the UNESCO Heirs to the Ocean Water Summit 2021. Again, art can share worldview and share ideas that sometimes are hard to convey between peoples. Um, this is another example of water is sacred or water is life art that can influence your art at home. And I really like how the earth is sort of the central part of it. And the feminine nature of the earth and the water is recognized. And that's a theme that's been throughout art. And in my tribal community, uh, the connection between women and water and that um, is sacred. Remember, our first experience with water is in the womb. And that's something that every single human has in common. So the UNESCO Heirs to the Ocean Water Summit 2021 was an international youth summit for youth 13 to 25. And 
young people that care about protecting the ocean, protecting the water, and making those international global connections and networking, um, sharing ideas and experiences, how we can use our voices to encourage action, how we, what we can do as, as people. Um, it was such a blessing that it was shared virtually around the world, but it can be accessed through the internet and on the website there's an experiment that Veda Austin shared and it's called collective molecular photography step by step and the instructions are going to be on a PDF on the Family Maker Night website and also the the video of her explaining her personal experience with this scientific experiment that showed the life of water and what to me, this is so important because it's another example how Western science and technology is able to understand and recognize something, the life of water. Hi again. Thank you, Mary Kate. That was a really great presentation. I learned so much about um, the river and about the importance of water. So I'm excited to see what kind of art our um, viewers have come up with. And I know you can't show me now, but you can show me by taking some pictures and uploading it to our Family Maker Night webpage. So I'm going to show you just how to do that now. Give me a moment while I share my screen. Okay, so on our hcoe.org Family Maker Night website, and you can get there by going to Families, Family Maker Night, and then it will bring you to this page. And if you scroll down, you will see all of the different events that we have had throughout this um, school year. And if you click on these pages, you'll be able to find recordings for all of our events. But what I'm going to show you right now is how to upload your artwork. So if you click on the event page for March, it's going to take you to the March Family Night, Family Maker Night page. And if you scroll down just a bit, it has Share Your Creations. So if you click this Submit My Creation, it will ask you for your name, your school, your grade. Again, the submitter's name. So this could be your parents or it could be you. Your email, a little bit about what you did, and then you're going to upload your photo. Now, it's very important that a family member, a legal guardian um, who's over the age of 18 gives permission for us to use um, your name and or if there's any pictures of you on our website. So if you don't have that family member, we can still show your website. We just won't be able to put your name with it. So thank you so much for participating in the Water is Life presentation. And I really hope that you do submit your art and get that into the Family Maker Night webpage. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.